everyone, I hope you are all well. Today's video is going to be about cabin crew essential in-flight products. Okay, so I previously worked as a flight attendant for Ryanair and these are some things that I found to be really essential and I might have to do a part two because I'm not necessarily strictly following the grooming standard list that they actually gave us. So these are things that aren't necessarily going to be on the list of things that they tell you to pack in your crew bag, okay? So this probably is more specific to Ryanair short haul flights, yeah? Number one, a shoe pouch. So what I used to do is, especially in the winter time when they permitted us to, I used to go to work in my boots, my long black boots, and then once I got to the aircraft, once we got to the aircraft after the briefing, we would change into my crew, crew shoes. That's the, you know, the black leather shoes or leather look shoes that you wear inside the aircraft for service or you can wear your ballerina flats. To store them in your crew bag, you don't just wanna dump them in there. You want to put them in a shoe pouch. This is the one I have. I've had a few of these actually. This one came in a pack along with other travel packing cubes. I got them off Amazon. So I'm definitely gonna put a link to some in the description. They have so many different styles, men's, women's, and they probably actually have some cases which are thicker and more waterproof. But I found it really helpful to have a shoe pouch to put my crew shoes in or my ballerina, I, I never wore ballerina flats, but so for example, here you have the pouch, put your shoes in there, you just put them side by side. They're kind of designed in a way that you put them side by side and then you zip it up and you've got your shoes there. You can slot that into your crew bag, into your carry-on crew bag and take them out when you need to, before you start boarding, of course. As soon as you enter the aircraft, you kind of want the process to be easy, simple, whatever. And of course, this is why I need to do a part two because some things are not on my list, but one day I will tell you about the routine. And yeah, I think that would be quite uh, interesting. But yeah, this is number one, shoe pouch. It's very, very handy. If you don't have one, please go get one. You don't want your shoes messing up your paperwork or for example, your food, your containers, your spare clothes. There's so many things that you have to put in your crew bag. You don't want your shoes to mess them up, especially if it's been like a wet day, a dusty day. Maybe you live in the desert, one of those <laughs> desert countries. I don't know what your runway is like. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely a shoe bag, okay? I know that some crew bags do have multiple slots, but it's just nice to keep things kind of compartmentalized and organized. And this is just a simple, cheap, but very nice investment. Number two is an oven safe dish. I used to use something like this. You can, this looks tiny, this actually looks small, but you can fit so much food in here. My hair might change a little bit, sorry, it's not fully secure in one position. Now it's going all over the place. I'm gonna have to secure that. I used to use this one. I actually bought this specific one in Germany at uh, DM, I think it's DM. They're like three or four euros, depending on the size. This was probably like four euros, five max. They're so good. And they have like a rubber seal as well, so your food won't leak or pour. And then when you get to the aircraft, you get to heat up your yummy food and eat hot food. You do not have to bring sandwiches. <laughs> not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with sandwiches, but sometimes you just need something warm in you. Especially on those days when you're doing long flights. You know those long flights. <laughs> you're gonna want to have something to eat in between something real you know and I think the best way to to handle that is just to bring your own food I used to take sandwiches with me sometimes but I just get fed up of them whereas with food with real hot food can never get fed up of it because it's real and it's there's something about it that's very satisfying get these Pyrex or glass what brand is this Profissimo yeah you don't have to get this specific brand I'm gonna leave a link in the description get this pack your food in it remove the lid the lid is not oven safe because it's plastic and rubber put this in the oven switch the oven on and voila you have a hot meal and you feel good you feel satisfied and you feel 
you know, <laughs> more motivated to work after that. Number three is some Tupperware. Now you can use the Tupperware to put things in such as cut up fruit. I used to do that a lot. Uh, instead of me going with a whole apple or a whole orange and then I have to start cutting it with plastic forks. No, or even a blunt fork because I wouldn't want to travel with a sharp fork, would you? <laughs> would I even get past security, I wonder? I actually have to think about that. I don't know if I would get past security. Maybe I would. No, probably not. Okay, so instead of you going with a whole apple or a whole orange, I used to do oranges a lot because they're just very, very refreshing. What you can do is you can go with a container with a nice seal, maybe not another one like this because these ones are a little bit heavy. Get yourself a nice plastic container. I'll give you an example of a plastic container I used to particularly use. Okay, so this particular container, it's not in the best condition, but this was a very good container for me because it really sealed. It actually has a rubber seal again. The rubber seal makes a difference. It has a rubber seal. You clip it on all four sides and no juices leak out. It's actually much lighter than the glass one. So because you don't have to put this in the oven, you don't have to make all your containers glass because then you'll start hearing clanging in your bag as well. But just get um, this one for your food and this one to put your fruit in or anything kind of juicy, maybe crumbly, you know, just put it in a, a container like this. So this specific container actually comes from a shop called Tiger. Did you know Tiger? Tiger Copenhagen, I think they call it. Yeah, this book is from Tiger as well. It's called, um, yes, Flying Tiger, Flying Tiger. Go to Flying Tiger or Tiger Copenhagen and buy one of these containers. You can chop up fruit and vegetables. I used to put like even, I used to put like cucumbers, oranges, apples, all of them. I just chop them up and just put them in here. And then when I want a snack, just open it, get my fork and eat it. Now you might ask, why do you use a fork? The aircraft is very dirty. And sometimes you just, you don't want to like be popping into the toilet and back and forth and everything to wash your hands, even though you know, it's very possible for you to do that. It's just nice to know that you can eat your food without worrying about like germs and stuff. But I just say prep your food, like prep your food so that you don't have to start using your hands, <laughs> you know? All right, so definitely have yourself a Tupperware, which is actually sealed. Not one of these. These ones, they're just, they're really terrible. The lids are always falling off. These are good to use at home when you're just putting stuff on the shelf. When it comes to the aircraft, you have to be a bit more tactful in how you pack your food. And you don't also want to pack things that are going to explode because of the cabin pressure, okay? The next thing I'm going to say is very optional. Lunch bag, if you're carrying sandwiches and other small, small items, you can definitely get yourself a nice lunch bag. And I'll put a picture up here of a good one and of course I'll try to recommend something in the description again it's one of those things where you don't have to you can literally throw like no there's no rules you can literally throw your stuff into a bag but it just makes everything more organized if you can you know have you know a specific area to put your lunch in and put it in your crew bag okay so the next thing you want is a water bottle if you tend not to drink that much water or if you know you're going on a really sh a two leg um, flight or just really short flights you you don't have to take as much water. Now, you can take something like this. That's gonna keep your water quite chilled. Uh, these are the ones that kind of keep the temperature either hot or cold. It's like kind of like a flask. That's it. Or you can take one of those sports bottles, you know, the plastic ones. Or another one that you can take is uh, just an actual water bottle, like how you buy it in the shop. That's what I used to do. I'm even thinking, did I do two liters or do I, did I do 1.5? I'm not too sure what I did, but as cabin crew, you do pass security and they don't limit you as much as the passengers. So you can take the amount of water that you want usually, or maybe there's a specific amount. Don't quote me on that. But I used to take probably a maximum of two liters of water. So you can buy the water just as it is and just put it in your bag like this if you know you've got a very long day. Another thing I used to do is I used to go with an empty bottle and fill up at the crew room. So that way I'm not dragging heavy things with me on the way to the airport and everything. It really helps, you know, with, with the weight, especially because I was in Germany and I used to take public transport, S-Bahn, U-Bahn, steps, 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 steps. <laughs> 
so yeah it kind of was really handy it was kind of nice when I didn't have to be carrying a really heavy crew bag so sometimes I would actually fill up in the crew room the water there was really chilled really cold but yeah I don't know like I can't even remember what it tastes like I'm not even sure if it was nice water or anything uh, yeah, yeah I don't really remember but a lot of people do used to do that all the crew all the flight attendants all the pilots we all just like fill up at the crew room because it's just easier so that is an option that's why I'm saying just make sure you have the bottle please make sure you have the bottle you don't want to get dehydrated and then pay like how much is it three euros for a bottle of water on board no some moisturizing hand lotion the air gets so dry in the cabin like literally so dry your skin gets dry your hands you know your your palms get dry your hair gets dry take yourself some hand lotion this particular one I actually really like the smell is just unoffensive and it's got my favorite ingredients in it as well <laughs> it's got shea butter and coconut in it and it's by the brand EOS this is what the hand cream looks like and it's a bit cheap as well I got it from Poundland so yeah and actually that reminds me I need to use it now <laughs> it smells nice it smells really good I mean it's not the best hand cream I've ever used if you want a very good hand cream I really like the hand creams from L'Occitane um, and of course you can go to body shop there's so many hand creams out there just find one that's good and hydrating for you there's cheap ones expensive ones just find the one that works for you okay because it gets so dry in the cabin and you have to wash your hands so often because you are doing quite intense jobs <laughs> like serving people you know rolling that trolley up and down um, counting all the things in the back um, sometimes cleaning after people on this like while they're there and then of course after every flight apart from the very last flight you are cleaning up you know in between flights you are picking up stuff you have to wash your hands and you don't want your hands to be very dry and of course if it's not look it doesn't look nice if your hands are all dry and you're trying to serve people so definitely hand cream a hydrating face mist or face spray i didn't actually take this on board with me but one day you know i were when i was flying with the number one in the front i was yeah i was in the i was the number four she was the number one she was using this face mist and it was so hydrating it was so cooling and calming i was like why didn't i think of this sooner you know so i would definitely say that if you are about to start flying and you know you have sensitive skin or even if you don't i think you definitely <laughs> might get some dry skin on board get a hydrating spray i'm not exactly sure the brand that she was using but i will put a picture of an Avene spray Avene thermal water it looks round about the same as what she was using it could actually have been the one it just felt amazing it just felt so amazing and you can spray it on top um, of your makeup no problems it's just to prevent you you know you can just refresh you can refresh and feel good and stuff so definitely take the Avene thermal water to refresh yourself hydrate yourself so that your skin you know isn't so dry and crackly and everything okay so the next thing is a tea towel now this you're actually required to have in the list of um, things that they tell you to put in your crew bag before you start working so they will definitely make you have this during the training like towards the end of the training you need to make sure this stuff is in your crew bag and this is a tea towel why so that you can handle hot things that you take out of the oven not just for yourself but for the customers as well because when i was working there tell me if things have changed there were no tea towels for the staff there were no tea towels like for the job you had to bring your own tea towel so that you can remove things from the oven safely not burn yourself so for example well you know how to you probably all know how to remove stuff from the oven <laughs> But you take it so you go you take your tea towel sorry i don't have an example but you i'll use this <laughs> this is the the sleeve for my microphone you use the tea towel and take out of the oven so that you do not burn yourself you do not get an injury and of course i will leave recommendations for everything in the description of course when it comes to tea towels you probably have some lying around at home or you can just go to your local supermarket go to almost any you know store you can go to almost any store 
pick up some tea towels. I actually did not have a tea towel. I got a mitt. It's kind of like an oven mitt. That's another thing that you can get. Just make sure you have something to handle hot things from the oven for yourself and of course in general for the job. Something else you want to have is a passport holder. This one kind of goes without saying. I guess most of you do have passport holder but it really helps to have a good passport holder. Mine is extremely old. Like I actually need to upgrade this thing. Wow. I think my mom bought this for me when I was like either 14 or 15. It has my initials on the front of it but it's quite good. Oh my god it's so my passport holder is so old. Yeah but anyway it's even got oh my god it's even got my paper it's even got printings and this is what I used to use to um, put my attestation in it uh, to put my certificate of competence I guess anytime I flew I, I guess I'd put some boarding passes in it as well yeah so definitely get yourself a passport holder there's so many out there I mean you can see that mine has lasted me like 15 years so yeah they have them all over the internet I'm not sure if they make them like they used to you know I'm not sure if they make them like they used to but you can definitely check it out and see if you can find a style that you like but the most important thing here is function what I'd say is if you can get something with multiple pockets in it or at least two something where you can easily see out of that would be great then of course it has a button to secure it uh, the one thing I was seeing was a lot of passport holders online that it would just open like that then they didn't really have like the button on it to keep stuff together so definitely get something that feels like quite secure so that when it comes to the briefing it's really easy for you to pull to pull your papers out and pull your certificates out and show your you know your your documents that kind of thing so that's another essential thing that I think you need to have just get something get something nice don't just get like the, the that clear one sleeve because then everything's just going to be squashed in one place and then you end up ripping your paper because you know that certificate of competence is just a piece of paper it's not like but it's not like laminated you can laminate it yourself make sure it stays pristine you know for a long time but you don't want it to get water damage, you don't want it to get, you know, damaged. So definitely get something nice. It doesn't have to be expensive. It could be five pounds, ten pounds, you know, on the low end of things. And there are much more expensive ones out there, but you can you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a decent one. And I'll try to leave a link in the description. Okay, I actually skipped over one point, and that is hand sanitizer. This is an aloe vera antibacterial hand gel, kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria in seconds. This is good. One thing I notice a lot of people um, having is this kind of pouch that you put it in and then hang it on the side of your bag or your crew bag, your handbag, whatever, just for easy access. But I never found the need to do that. I just put this bottle inside my handbag and used it like that. That's it. The reason you want to have this is because you always, got, like I said, you're always handling dirt around the, the aircraft. Especially if you're flying now, you just want to make sure you're fully protected so it's always good to have hand sanitizer on deck and lastly you want to have a first aid kit uh, this is actually one that i bought in germany hartmann yeah this is actually one that i bought in germany from a chemist i oh yeah i didn't actually use any of this stuff in it this is actually one of the things that they do put on the list of stuff that you must have. If I can find that list, I'm going to try to make a video about it. But yeah, I never really used anything in here apart from maybe paracetamol. You just want to get a standard first aid kit. They do come with a lot of things inside. <laughs> Some gauze or gauze, however you say it. Potato, potato. Um, Some mini scissors. Um, what else? Some plasters. Oh my gosh, plasters. I didn't know that. They're nice plasters. Cleansing wipe. What else? Oh yeah, some plaster tape. Some gloves. It's all in German. Is it German? All different languages here. Some latex gloves, I think. Latex. Powder free. <laughs> Whole bunch of stuff. And I've added some more stuff here like plasters so yeah you kind of want to have a first aid kit in your bag there are specific things that they do ask you to put inside your first aid kit or to make sure that you have not all of them are in here i removed some stuff just because i'm not flying anymore if you would like me to make that video because you're interested because if you're working 
for them you probably you might already have that stuff or you might already have you might already have that stuff but if you would like me to make that video then let me know otherwise i hope this video has been interesting and most importantly helpful for you please do leave suggestions of videos that you would like me to make don't forget to follow me on instagram and i'll see you in my next one bye